3.36 p.m. Saturday, May 6, 2023. The Allen Police Department received various 911 calls stating that an active shooter had begun opening fire at the Allen Premium Outlet in Allen, Texas. No, I do not have a description. Do you have one? Okay, I've got a Hispanic male, 5'8 to 5'9, 350 pounds. They just go right into the middle of where he's shooting. I hope they're from there. What story is he in? He was in front of Perry Ellis walking north, northwest. Perry Ellis? He was in front of Perry Ellis walking north, north, Perry northwest. Okay. 5'8, 350 pounds, all black, wearing a motorcycle vest with white riding on the back. Shooting a black semi automatic uh, rifle. Okay. All right. All right. We have multiple police officers there, so I need you to keep your head down. I gotta let you go, okay? Where's the shooter outside? Where are they outside? Where is he outside? He's walking outside. Where, ma'am? Where? At the Fossil store. Fossil store? We were at the Fossil store at Allen Outlet, and he was right there. Okay, Fossil store? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I, I've got it. Hey, Fossil store has a shooter. All right, thank you. Alan 911, are you calling about the shooting? Yes, yes we got a victim. We got a victim where? In Boutique 632, it's the suite number 632 Francesca's. Francesca's? Okay, can you describe the injuries to me? I think it's in his chest. I'm in my car. I can't even get back into my boutique. I'm locked out. I can't go without police going with me because I'm scared. Okay. We have help on the way. We do have medics in the area right now. Shooting victim inside Francesca's. I think I see the cops on the corner. If they can come to my car, or okay. if they go in Francesca's, can they open up the back door to let me in? Okay. We have police officers there. I need you to, can you, uh, are you with the guy that was shot? No, I left him in there because I wasn't sure if he was a shooter. I didn't want to let him near my desk. Okay. All right. Well, we have the medics there. I'm going to tell them where he's at. They're going to get there as fast as they can, okay? Okay. Can right. someone gets in there, can they open up the back door to let me in so I can lock my boutique? Uh, I don't know, ma'am. I don't have the answer to that right now. You're going to have to talk to an officer when the situation calms down a little, okay? Okay. I see officers, officers on the corner. They're okay. telling us not to move. Yes, ma'am. So just go ahead and follow their instructions yes. for now. i got to let you go, okay? An unnamed on-duty Allen Police Department officer was already present at the outlet prior to the shots ringing out. He was there for an unrelated matter. It isn't clear what he was initially responding to, but body cam footage captured just seconds before the mass shooting event starts depicts him speaking with a young mother with her two children. It appears as if the children weren't listening to their mother as they weren't wearing their seatbelts. Make sure y'all be good, okay? And make sure you wear your seatbelts when mommy's driving, okay? You understand? Okay? Okay? All right. All right, you be good. <laughs> Seatbelt? <laughs> wow. 145, I think we got shots fired at the outlet mall. Got people running. Get going, get going, get moving! 420 on the ground. They're moving further away from me. Go, 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 keep moving! I'm about to pull off the and moving, trying to get to him. That's still shooting. I'm on foot. I need everybody I got. What? Yes!
what you got? Are we on bad shooter? Yeah, we got people coming. One forty five, I believe we got a mass shooter. I got Maxine on the ground. Drop it! Drop it! Ricky. I'm passing injured. Ricky. I'm moving as fast as I can trying to get over there. I'm by Tommy Hilfiger. I don't know where he's at. Shot the star. Alright, actually he's still going. That's why we're police, they got him down. I'm by some class hut. I'm moving up on them. Who's this behind me? Watch your fire. Watch your fire! I got him down! Yes, I got him. I think so! I'm not hearing any gunshots! Is he down? Yeah. Goddamn, bro! Got him, bro! Now stay your f*** down! Stay your f*** down! Stay your f*** down! You good? You good? You good? You got him? It had been an average weekend for many across the United States on that May weekend. And in Texas, wouldn't be alienated by that statement. With good weather scheduled in for the day across most of the state, it was to no surprise that many Texans opted to spend the day out with family and friends. Whether that be a bite to eat followed by a visit to the park, participating in some kind of outdoor activity, or just staying at home catching some rays, there was something for everyone to do on May 6th, 2020. The Allen Premium Outlet is a place many would visit on that weekend, but to say that it didn't get busy every day of the week would be an understatement. Dubbed one of the busiest shopping centres in the whole of North Texas, Allen Premium Outlet is home to 120 stores, including the likes of Coach, Tory Burch and Michael Kors. In 2018, the outlet completed an expansion that had been two years in the making. It had added a huge H&M and Armani outlet. It was also home to 1,300 new parking spaces. So yes, thousands visit on a near enough daily basis, but given the fact that May 6th, 2023 was the weekend before Mother's Day, and it was a weekend, meant there would have been at least double the amount of people than usual, which makes this case even more disturbing than it already is. At 3.36pm on May 6th, 2023, 33-year-old Mauricio Garcia 
wearing all black tactical gear, pulled up to the Allen Premium outlet armed with eight firearms. After driving briefly around the car park, he stopped off at the H&M store, got out of the vehicle and began shooting indiscriminately. Although armed with eight guns, Mauricio would carry only three of those, which included his AR-15. Over the course of four minutes, 15 people would be shot, eight killed as a part of this mass shooting event. At the time of recording this video, a specific timeline in reference to who was killed at what point during the incident still hasn't been reported. What we do know though is that Mauricio was eventually gunned down by police outside the Fat Burger and Buffalo's Express restaurant. That means then that he more than likely would have made his way through the car park. So the victims would have been shot at some point during this journey. The Cho family, Cindy, Caillou, and their two sons, James and William, had spent the afternoon visiting the Allen Premium outlet to have a shop around. William had just celebrated his sixth birthday on the 2nd of May, and so the family were in happy spirits. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, only one of the Cho family would walk away alive from this incident. Six-year-old William would have his mother, father, and his three-year-old brother taken away from him, as a part of this tragedy. At just three years old, James would have had his whole life ahead of him. But it wasn't just one family that had their entire world shattered before them in a matter of moments. Rather, two. Eight-year-old Sophia Mendoza and her sister, 11-year-old Daniela, had decided to take a trip to the Allen Premium Outlet to go shopping in preparation for the summer break. The girls were known to have been busy around the end of the school year, whether that be field trips, swim practice, or award ceremonies. And so when the opportunity was there on May 6th, Idla Mendoza, the girl's mother, thought it would be a great idea to get some bonding time in with her daughters. So they decided to go for a shop. At some point during this trip, the trio walked past the H&M store when they came face to face with the monster that was Mauricio Garcia. The two girls would sadly succumb to their injuries. Idler, however, would go on to survive after being badly wounded. Described as a sweet, caring young man by those who knew him, 20-year-old Christian Lacour would go out of his way to do what was asked of him. It's to no surprise then that when shots rang out on May 6th, he sprang into action. He had been employed as a security guard at the Allen Premium outlet for a lengthy period leading up to the day in question. During the shooting, he managed to escort members of the public to safety. There are conflicting reports on how Christian would meet death. Some say he would go on and specifically help one person and was sadly shot dead in the process. Others say he successfully helped that person, but when he went back to help more people, he was shot dead. Whichever story ends up being true, Christian is a hero. 26-year-old Aishwara Thatikonda had travelled to the United States from Hyderabad, India to study construction management at the Eastern Michigan University and she would graduate with a master's degree in 2020. Shortly after, she would relocate to Texas where she managed to secure full-time employment with a construction firm. On May 6th, the 26-year-old decided she would head over to the Allen Premium Outlet to buy herself an outfit for her 27th birthday, which would have been May 18th. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, she would never be able to celebrate it. After being gunned down during the mass shooting event, Aishwara's body was flown back over to her native country so she could have a traditional Hindu funeral, ensuring the last rites can be performed. I was working when the mass shooting happened. The first thing that I went to go do was lock the doors. At first, seven people inside the store went to the fright hallway in the back to try and exit to the parking lot. But there was a man with a gun back there. Instead, everyone shuffled back inside the store where the stock room had a metal door. When I checked my CCTV to see what was happening, I saw a man die right in front of my eyes. The man was shot in the back and fell on the concrete sidewalk. A few seconds after the first shot, the man raised his hand up but he was shot a second time. That's Willing Factory store employee Marcus Kogosian telling news reporters about the death of the final victim of the mass shooting, 32-year-old Elio Kamana Rivas. Elio had been living in Texas for roughly eight months before he was killed. He had successfully applied for asylum because he was fleeing a life of violence in Venezuela. On the day in question, he'd been waiting for his brother, Roberto, as he had just touched down in the United States after also fleeing a life of violence. Elio was said to have been a hard worker and was sending money back to Venezuela to support his family. His brother is now following in his footsteps, going even harder in his brother's memory. It's a shame that they never got to live the life that they wanted to live in the United States. 
There isn't much information out there about Mauricio Garcia's early life, other than the fact that back in 2008, he attempted to join the military, but was released three months later for mental health related issues. So when we're attempting to search for a motive behind the shooting, we've got to look at his online activity in order to try and get into Mauricio's mind. Although it should be noted that an official motive has never been given. To put it simply, Mauricio held white supremacist views, although he himself was of Hispanic descent. Some of you may be scratching your head thinking, how? But if you look at that online activity and the tattoos across his body, they show his loyalty to the ideology. In one post from his OK account, I'm not going to show it here, but I will summarise. Mauricio would speak about his interaction with some Southeastern Asian people. Whether this story is true or whether he made it up isn't known. Within this story, he makes extremely racist stereotypes against the people who he references going on to mock them. He finishes up the story by stating that if the people were to come near his pets, he would go on to kill them. In other posts, he would go on to quote right-wing extremists who were both anti-Semitic and anti-Hispanic. These quotes would contain racism against both groups of people. Not only did Mauricio hold white supremacist views, he was also either interested in the insult movement or was an insult sell himself. On his OK account, he would post about some of the articles he was interested in. Some of them are as follows. We are all incels now. I'm thinking of getting an incel pride tattoo. Lonely men everywhere are joining the incel movement. Here's your 101 guide. The incel breakdown. How to deal with constant rejection. How to talk to your incel friends. We still don't know how long Mauricio had been planning his attack on the Allen Premium outlets, but one thing for sure is that he 100% planned this attack. On the 15th of April 2023, Mauricio took a trip to the outlet to scope out the place, more than likely to see if Google was telling the truth about Saturday afternoon being the busiest time. Of course it was, and the rest is sad history. Trying to make sense of Mauricio's quote-unquote goodbye note is quite the task, but when you remove all the TV and movie quotes and the incoherent ramblings, we're left with a man who seems emotionless and cold-blooded. He talks of being cremated as soon as possible and that he didn't want a headstone or a marker for him to be remembered by. He also said that even if he had spoke to someone about his mental health-related issues, it wouldn't have prevented him from carrying out the attack. In other words, this was always going to happen at some point. Top part of the church, back to the head. Go watch the video. See ya.